one was traumatic one was healing hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel this is open diary with Ezi. my name is Ezizani, and please do feel welcome to this channel if you are new please do join the family and i hope you subscribe and also hope you become part of the notification bell and if you are a returning subscriber thank you so much for your continuous support guys we are growing every day i see growth and i am so proud and happy about that so this week we are doing something a little different we are having a story time right where i am gonna tell you about um okay so for those that may not know i have two kids right so i'll be sharing with you the birth of both the kids and just how different it was one was traumatic one was healing um one was healing in terms of healing from the trauma and making sure the second birth became totally different from how the first birth was okay so let me start with my son my son is eight this year my daughter is two so you can imagine the birth was eight years ago but i'm just gonna quickly take you through it because yeah it was one where i was left traumatized like i was traumatized to a point where i think i truly believe i was done having kids i truly believe i was only gonna have one child and that should be enough that's how much i was so traumatized okay so i fell pregnant in 2014 and then when i fell pregnant um the pregnancy went fine there was no issues except um just conditions that come with my pregnancies for the, of which you can watch on other episodes if you want to know what that is about but we are not here to talk about that today so i remember my water broke at half past two in the morning i was with my little sister and my mother-in-law by then i was living at uh, my in-law's site so I was with my little sister and my mother-in-law and when my water broke it almost felt like I wanted to pee you know I don't know first pregnancies are tricky as much as you google and you try and read so much information you don't really get much out of it until you go and you experience it for yourself so it was tricky as much as I had googled to see how does labor start and 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 there were so many things but with me it was my water broke half past two in the morning and we live like 10 minutes drive to the clinic and by then we didn't have a car right so my mother-in-law went to my neighbor and asked my neighbor uh if he could take us to the hospital i think the neighbor knew he was just on standby the neighbor took us to the hospital by then i'm feeling nothing the water broke i'm like oh so this is how labor is i'm feeling absolutely nothing we get to the clinic and the ladies check me and they were like no ways there's no ways she can give birth here at the clinic this baby is way too big for us to risk giving birth here. So we have to call an ambulance to come take her to the public hospital. Mind you, this is all happening in Limpopo, right? Like Limpopo in the deep rural areas, okay? So the public hospital is like, no, we have to call the ambulance to come take you to the public hospital. Okay, by then I'm feeling nothing still, right? Then this other nurse makes a remark and says, hey, the way this one is chilled, when the pain starts, hey, she will be humbled. <laughs> I was like, what is she talking about? I feel nothing. My water is broken. It's been an hour. Nothing is happening. So obviously nothing, you know, I'm, I'm ready for this. I'm good. I'm chilled. We are chatting with my sister. We are talking, you know, we're just, we're just chilling. <laughs> two hours. Two hours in. Hey. I saw angels fly. <laughs> I got this pain. You know, when you're getting a pain that you're not even expecting. You're not expecting it. You don't know what to expect, okay? get this pain and i freeze like you know i freeze and i freeze and i hold my sister's hand and my sister's like what's going on i'm like shh, shh. i didn't want to talk you know that pain you can't talk through it right okay the pain passed okay uh, after um, 20 minutes again another one and then from there it started being more consistent mind you the ambulance arrives after 30 minutes when it arrives at that time i'm in pain contractions are eating like this <laughs> like they're not even giving me a break to breathe and at that point it's just me and the guys on the ambulance my mom and then my sister had to go back home and then they were gonna follow me to the public hospital cool now the road is a tar road right like it's a very bumpy 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 tar road so it was like 
you know, as contractions are hitting and they're doing ups and downs. Oh, that ambulance journey was chaotic. Okay, we get we got to the hospital. I'm expecting they should give me a, a wheelchair. You know, they should push me with a wheelchair. I'm in labor. That's what they do in the movies, right? <laughs> no. They're like, you have to work. The more you work, the, the more the baby goes down. You. Hey. That walk from where the ambulance dropped me to the ward. It felt like torture. Like, contractions were strong at that point. Like, they were strong to a point where, you know, when you don't know whether to scream or to cry or to, hey, you just don't know, man, you're just a mess. Okay, I get to the ward. And when you get to, like, the ward is like this open space, right? I'm, guys, I'm, I'm giving you a public hospital kind of thing. Open space where there's a bench where everybody who's about to give birth sits there. And then there are these um, beds with little curtains, Jana, where when you're ready to give birth, you go there, you give birth, they clean, the other one comes in just like that. Okay, I get them. They're like, what's your name? <laughs> Mind you, you are being called out when you're at the bench. They're like, what's your name? You say your name. How many kids do you have? You say how many kids you have. How old are you? You say how old you are. I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, sharp. Then it was my turn to get in because now labor was close. Now the one part, the one part that I hate that nobody warned me about was that thing when they take the hand and they put it inside to check you how many centimeters you are. Guys, that thing is painful. Yo, that thing is like every time when the nurses had to come to check, I was like, this is painful. At that time, you are going through con contractions. And then on top of that, they are doing that hand thing, guys. That thing is painful. And nobody told me. Nobody told me, guys. I was only 24 when I had my son. As much as I googled all these things, nobody told me. It's not like I knew anybody who I was close to had a baby anyway. Shut up. And they checked, they checked. They're like, no, um, she's going very fast. Mind you, my water broke at half past two. I got to the hospital by four. By seven in the morning, I was giving them. Okay, cool. Now, the nurse is like, no, this baby is too big. We need two doctors. Okay, they go, they get two doctors, they check me, they're like, this baby is big and it's going to be a risk. She needs to push. Okay, sure. They're like, push. Mind you, I don't even know what it is to push. Like, you know, push in your mind, you are thinking a different kind of push, but then there's a certain way of pushing, but obviously they don't take time to educate you about that, except them screaming at you from a side to say, you're not pushing correctly. How about you tell me how to push? This is my first baby. How am I supposed to know how I'm supposed to push? I've never had a baby before. Sharp. Sure now likely my mother-in-law works at the hospital so she was arriving for her shift and then she came the moment they realized that um i am her daughter-in-law <laughs> treatment changed the treatment changed now it became they were now sweeter they were now more kinder i was like yeah whatever at that time i'm going through pain i didn't even care okay sure from there the doctors came it was time for me to give birth i pushed i pushed the baby wasn't coming out and then the doctor was like no this baby is too big <laughs> we're gonna have to cut it yo mind you there are two doctors there are three nurses and then there are two students right i, I was like a project like seven people were on my bed i was like a project one was helping me hold my feet you know i'm pushing one is motivating me to push the other ones are checking down there if the baby is crowning correctly they're like, we have to cut. You know when you're in pain, right? As much as they give you those injections, the anesthetic injections in public hospitals, I'm sorry, they don't work. They don't work. I could feel each and every single pain as they were cutting. Then that doctor cuts. Hey. Did I not scream? Did I not scream? Because the injections to help numb the pain, they, were, they, they, they didn't work. I'm sorry, but they did not work. They cut me at that time now i'm losing so much blood and the doctor is panicking and the doctor's like no she's losing so much blood we need to push this baby to come out okay they're like no you need to push you need to push you know when you push with every single thing that you have in your body to a point where when that baby came out i was drained i fainted when the baby came out i lost conscious and i'm bleeding i'm losing so much blood i could hear the doctor saying no she needs blood transfusion she's losing so much blood and i don't know somewhere i was a bit unconscious 
I heard my babies cry. It was this relief in me that, okay, the baby is okay. But then after that, I lost conscious. And then when I woke up, now it was like, okay, I have um, a drip. They were doing blood transfusion on me. I had a drip and I was unconscious. Then I checked on the side, my baby was right there. You know, there was something about my son. My son, from the day he was born, he did not bother anyone. He fell asleep immediately after me being conscious he fell asleep this is before i even breastfed him then when i woke up the nurse came and my mother-in-law came also and she was like no um try and breastfeed him and then i tried to breastfeed and then ah he didn't want to wake up now my son has always loved sleep from day one he did not want to wake up so i tried to breastfeed he didn't wake up and then she's like no leave him he'll wake up when he's hungry okay then that helped me to also rest and sleep and recover because at that time i'm in pain I'm in pain from being cut down there. Okay, and then later on, after two hours, we both wake up and then I breastfeed him and then he breastfeeds fine. Mind you, it's my first time, so it was so it was kind of this sensation that you've never experienced, but it was it was good. Okay, he breastfed fine. After that, they said no changes, nappy, check if he made a poo because at the hospital they have this rule. They will not discharge you unless the baby makes a poo. So it was like, okay, uh, then that word. Um, other people whose babies had made a poo, they were being discharged, they were going. Mine had not yet made a poo because obviously he didn't eat. Sharp. After breastfeeding, um, I now had to go and take a shower. Mind you, the shower, it's a cold shower. You know when you get to the bathroom and it's messy, but you have to take a shower and you are in pain. And it is cold water, there's no hot water. I got there, I stood there. Hey, I remember saying this prayer in my heart. I was like, God. Should I decide to have a second child, make sure I have money. Make sure I am ready for the second child. Make sure I have money to a point where I am going to choose where I want to go and give birth. That was my little prayer. Sharp. I took a shower. I finished. I went back and uh, now my sister arrived with the clothes and then, you know, everything was fine. And then later on, after two hours, the baby made a poo. So I was so glad that I am being discharged that same day. And then later on at night, I went, I was being discharged. Yo, I got home, guys. I couldn't sit in the car. It was uncomfortable. When I got home, I couldn't sit. Whether I put a cushion or I put whatever, it was painful. Guys, like, I had a deep cut. That deep cut where even when they were stitching me, I could feel each and every single thing. So, you can imagine. I got home. Now, I have to focus on this new baby, right? Like, I have to focus on the baby. And forget about everything else but it was hard to focus on the baby only because i'm also constantly in pain and i'm trying to heal from that so after a while i remember i would have these episodes where i would be in so much pain then i would just start crying and the stitch took so long to heal it healed in other areas but where they tied the knots when they were stitching it back there's it started to form um these little things like pimples and they would be so painful and when you go to the clinic they don't care about checking you the mother. No. They check the child. They're like, nah, KG is fine. The baby is growing fine. How about me, the mother? Did you check me? Do you even ask me how I gave birth? Do you even know what complications I might be dealing with? There's no capacity for that. So sharp. After six months, after six months, I remember, that's when my stitch finally healed. But I could still feel if I sit for long, it was still painful. So that stitch, to be honest with you, took over a year to completely heal for me to say I am healed. I'm okay. But I was left traumatized. Like, I, I would have random days where, when the baby was still here, I would just cry because I'm in pain and the baby is crying and I'm trying to, you know, get used to being a new mom. And at the same time, you were traumatized by the kind of birth that you had, which you were not even expecting. It was just a lot. Like, it was a lot. But, sharp, we healed. And then after that, six years, five years down the line, um, I finally felt I was ready to have another child, right? This is after discussions with my husband. I was like, doing yo, the way my first birth was traumatic. I wish I did not have to give birth again, but there's something in me that says I'm ready to be a mom again. And my husband was like, no, how about we approach it differently? I mean, now you have money, you are working, you have medical aid. You can get, you know, good hospitals that you really, the, the kind of service that you want. So we started researching. Funny thing, I started researching before I was even pregnant, okay? And then that's when I discovered Genesis Clinic. And I was like, yeah, when I get pregnant, this is where I'm going. Genesis Clinic basically specialized in 
natural breath unfortunately it has closed down but they specialized in natural breath sharp when i discovered i was pregnant i was like hey you know what i am going i'm gonna get me a midwife and then you know everything that's where i'm going to like i had my mind made up with that's where i'm going to give birth okay i got a midwife and then that midwife six months in she had to leave she got a job at another hospital and i was like no i'm not about to follow her to the hospital in pretoria i'll stick here and then now she referred me to a few people she's like you can choose from this midwife that i trust but you have to make a choice for yourself then i got this other lady and oh my god she was she was heaven sent that lady was so much what she would explain everything mother everything baby related and she walks you through the journey man like she walks with you there isn't anything that is a shock to you as to what's happening or what i'm supposed to do and whatever so the day i gave birth right we had an agreement with my husband that my husband said no i also want to be part of the birth and if it's okay with you i want to be there with you every single step i want to walk this this journey with you guys the relief i had then i was like okay at least my husband is going to be there that's good and then that morning of the induction i went there to do to induce me um we got there at seven in the morning um she checked everything she's like no the baby is fine the baby is growing fine we are ready for the you know to do the the, the induction sharp they did the, in the the injection we should start labor and then after that she's like no go um take a walk at the park the more you are working the baby will be going down okay go to the park the park is not far from there at the hospital as we were working with my husband right because remember my husband is with me we started talking to the baby <laughs> i know it sounds crazy but we wanted to make it the best experience um my husband was telling the baby who he is what kind of father is going to become um telling him about his like telling her about her brother you know as we are working you know so that the baby can go down but we we're, we're talking like almost like we're talking to a baby that's right here with us and then i spoke um also the honesty of how scared i am how traumatic my first death was and how i'm praying and hoping that her birth is going to be different and while at that i'm also praying in my heart i am praying i'm praying that you know what i hope this birth is totally different from what i experienced with my son okay after working for about 30 minutes we went back to the hospital and then the midwife checked she's like no the baby's crowning perfectly you're about two centimeter or so so go up and down the stairs so my husband would be holding my hand i'm going up and down the stairs so the baby can go down then she tells you to also do some squats and then you squat a bit and then sharp now i started to feel a little bit of contractions she's like the moment you start to feel a little bit of contractions come back so that i can check you okay i go back and then she does that hand thing but she does it gently it's not <clears throat> just shoving it down to you it was nice and gently and then she checks then she will also ask are you comfortable is this okay then she will check she will check she's like no the baby is, is coming down well um you're about four centimeter and then she's like now i'm going to inject you with something that's now going to push the contractions to go quicker before we distress the baby okay sharp before we stress out the baby i'm like okay that's cool she gave me something and the pains started being intense like the pain started being intense and i was like okay and then my husband is there remember at genesis you have a whole room to yourself which has a double bed a bathtub a shower a mini kitchen a balcony so you have like this whole bachelor thing going on so it's like a room for you guys really and then they serve you with food they serve you with breakfast tea whatever you want so we are sitting down the bed with my husband my husband is sitting with me we're talking we're talking and then the contractions start then my husband is just saying to me, baby, breathe, breathe. They were painful. He said, breathe. Remember we said this breath is going to be different. Just, just breathe through them. Yo, I breathe, I breathe. It got to a point where they were painful. They were painful. And I remember my husband just holding my hand. And I was screaming. As much as I was doing the, there was a point where I was just, Oh, I was just crying. I was just screaming and my husband was just there holding my hand, rubbing me. He's like, baby, we got this. We're almost there. We got this. We're almost there. Hang in there. Sharp. And then I think after 30 minutes of that screaming session and the breathing and whatever, I couldn't stand. I couldn't do anything. So I was just sitting on the bed. The midwife comes back and she's like, no, 
let's check she's like no this baby is ready to be born please listen to what i tell you ne? only push when i tell you to push don't just push i was like okay then she explains to me she's like when i say push almost as in you are making a pull but not making a pull okay she's like push that force here with almost like with your body and then that helps to push the baby and your breathing helps to push the baby down do you know how liberated i felt to be educated like that about birth versus with my son you needed to figure it out yourself like you've had a baby before okay okay sharp i push i push it's like okay wait don't push too hard push only when i tell you when you feel a contraction push with it because that will help you not to tear because i had explained to her that with my the first baby i teared so much that it took forever to heal and i was traumatized she's like no i'm gonna make sure it doesn't happen with, the, with this baby the idea was that i was gonna give birth in water but the baby came quicker than we anticipated and i was like no it's fine let's jump the water thing we can do the bed thing sharp and then i push and then she sees the baby coming she's like okay wait when the next contraction come push with it okay when the contraction came i push with it and guys within 15 minutes my baby was out there was no tearing there was no stitch there was no trauma to deal with after and then after that she took out the placenta the placenta she cleaned me up and um they cleaned up my baby the nurses all come to the room they clean up your baby they don't take your room like they don't take your baby to somewhere else to, no, no 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 they do everything right in front of you you can see it clean up the baby and they clean me up and then they clean up the bed and then from there they give you privacy and then from there it was me my husband and my daughter and after the baby came out my husband held their fist right because i was still like you know, I was so, I couldn't believe that was it. Like, I could not believe that's it. I've given birth. I'm done. No trauma. None of it. My my husband held her and we just put her on, on, on his chest. And she started a little cry. And we just looked at each other and we just smiled. Like, we were happy. We were happy. We just smiled. And then from there, it was like, okay, they gave us our privacy. We bonded with the baby. I took the baby, put her on my breast, and she breastfed. And guys that was it i had given birth to my daughter there was no stitch that i had to heal from there was, there was nothing we only spent one night at the hospital that they could observe her but then after that they discharged us we, we, like they, they discharged us as we went back home there was no drama like even when i was at home when i was looking after her i wasn't traumatized i didn't have tears going down my face like with my son where I'm, I'm in pain tears are going down and i have to take care of my son with my daughter it was this peace this peace that i've never experienced and the fact that i got to share that with my husband yo guys it was everything having him there was everything so there is a part of me that truly believes god made sure that the birth of my daughter was a healing of what i went through with my son because what i went through with my son was a near-death experience like it was so bad that you have so many people are attending to you and you feel things physically that you can't change somebody's cutting you and somebody's teaching you back and you can feel each and every single pain that for me was a trauma that made me think maybe i never ever want to have other kids so with my daughter it healed all of that i see breath differently i feel liberated i know I can educate myself to the kind of breath that I want to have. And yes, sometimes things don't go according to plan, but with my daughter, it did. And I'm glad it did. I'm glad I didn't end up in C-section. I'm glad I didn't end up in any emergency, anything. It felt so empowering. It felt so good to just know that it went beautifully like that. So yeah, guys, that's my story time. That is how different the birth of my son, which was eight years ago, and the birth of my daughter, which was two years ago. It was two different births and one was trauma near death experience one was healing it was healing and empowering kind of birth but at the end of the day i'm a mommy of two today and i couldn't be more proud and i do think should by any miracle any miracle happen that i get pregnant again <laughs> because i'm not planning it <laughs> then i definitely do believe i would still go the midwife the natural birth route um for me that was empowering and those people are trained to truly understand you and 
take walk you through the journey man and it just makes a whole world of difference so yeah guys um i hope you enjoyed this episode please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and yeah more content coming up more story times coming up but yeah this is the story that i wanted to share with you guys to say hey guys sometimes we do have a choice we can liberate ourselves and make different choices and heal from the traumas that we have had to deal with in natural birth or in birth experience in whatever way because you do hear stories of a lot of women who go through so much during birth and i do believe birth is supposed to be something so beautiful but unfortunately sometimes it can end up being life threatening sometimes it can end up being so traumatic that it is very hard to heal from but yeah guys that's my story i hope you enjoyed this episode please see you on the next one bye for now